Hey there my wedding planning friends and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. If you don't know already, I'm Emily Summer. I own an event planning company in Montana and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. So we spend a lot of time talking about the wedding and planning the wedding and the planning process of the wedding day itself. What about the wedding rehearsal and rehearsal dinner? So today we're going to dive into all that goes into planning a wedding rehearsal and rehearsal dinner. planning your rehearsal dinner, there are several factors to consider. Much like the wedding, the main things to consider are the number of guests that you plan to invite to rehearsal dinner, the location and the proximity from the venue where you will have your rehearsal, and where the actual rehearsal dinner will take place. Food, obviously, it's a rehearsal dinner, so dinner is typically involved. And then, of course, money in your budget. So first of all, when it comes to guests, this is totally up to you as far as who you want to invite to re your rehearsal dinner. Um, traditionally, this is reserved for the family and the bridal party, and typically you would have everyone that is involved in the rehearsal, so everyone that's taking part in some way, shape, or form in the ceremony. So obviously the bridal party, your officiant, your parents that might be walking you down the aisle, any flower girls, ring bearers, anyone that is doing a reading or anything like that during your ceremony will be at your rehearsal. So then following the rehearsal will be the rehearsal dinner and all of those people will be in attendance. Now it's up to you whether you want to invite more people than that or have keep it very minimal. I have seen weddings that have had nearly as many people at the rehearsal dinner than at the wedding and that again is totally up to you for who you want to invite, who you want to have in attendance. Um, a lot of couples choose to have anyone that is traveling really far, so across the country or having to travel a long distance to get there to come to the rehearsal dinner as sort of an extra thank you for being present for the wedding. Obviously keep in mind that the more people that you have at your rehearsal dinner means more mouths to feed, thus more money that is going to be spent. So that might be a deciding factor for you when it comes to who exactly is going to be invited to the rehearsal dinner. There are also additional events you can do to either supplement or take place of the rehearsal dinner. Again, traditionally, the rehearsal dinner takes place following the rehearsal and is the form of a dinner, whether that is a very uh, more formal, everyone seated, plated kind of dinner, or more of a uh, mixer, buffet style, people grab food and kind of mix and mingle. Whatever floats your boat, whatever speaks more to you guys, I've seen it done both ways, both ways work great. Um, you can also do something like a meet and greet or a cocktail hour, so to speak, either before the rehearsal dinner or maybe even the night before if you have a lot of people that are traveling. This is something that couples will do is host a little like cocktail hour, champagne toast, um, meet and greet, mingle for like an hour or two just to kind of be able to greet all of your guests that are traveling and have an opportunity for them to connect with one another as well because on your wedding day, as you probably have heard, things go very quickly. It becomes a bit of a world Wind, and if there's a lot of people traveling or guests that you don't get to see very often, you don't get to spend a lot of time with them on your actual wedding day. So this is a great opportunity to be able to spend more time with those guests that you are excited to have in attendance that you don't get to see very often. When it comes to paying, again, traditionally the bride's family is known to pay for the wedding and the groom's family pays for the rehearsal dinner. Um, however, I would say this tradition is is pretty much irrelevant at this point. I feel like I see just as many couples paying for their own weddings as I do, um, you know, families switching and taking responsibility for paying for both parts and splitting it three ways. Um, however works for you, I would say the tradition has kind of gone out the window, but if you are wanting to stick to tradition, typically bride's family pays for the wedding, groom's family plays, pays for and plans the uh, rehearsal dinner. So much like planning a wedding, you want to plan your rehearsal dinner far in advance as well as venues do book out months in advance, much like your wedding venue. And this is especially true if you're planning a wedding for uh, the peak wedding season, which is May to August or September, depending on where you're located. Ideally, you should decide on a place and book your venue about six months in advance for the rehearsal dinner, just so that you can be sure to secure that location and you won't have to be scrambling to find a spot later in the planning process. 
Uh, the, the remaining decisions as far as exactly what food you want to serve, the quantity of food to serve, and sending out your invitations can happen much later in the process, about three to four months uh, from the wedding day or from the rehearsal dinner date. But securing the location is the first thing you want to do. What do you even do at a rehearsal dinner? So again, typically this is a dinner, whether that is a sit down and plated style, buffet, more of a mixer, meet and greet style, whatever you decide. And a lot of people will use this time to have additional toasts that you may not have time for at your wedding. So on a wedding day, um, if you've seen my other videos, I'm sure that you've heard this, but you don't want to have more than like 15, 20 minutes of toast during your wedding on your wedding day because your guests get a little bit antsy, things start to drag on, and so typically it is just the maid of honor, um, best man, and parents of the bride and groom, and maybe the bride and groom themselves that are giving a toast on the wedding. So if there are additional friends, if um, you have family members that want to say something or your father that wants to say something, but not in front of a ton of people like there will be on the wedding day, have them do it at your rehearsal dinner so it's just in, in front of a smaller group but you're still getting that moment. This is a great opportunity for that. Also, a lot of people will choose to hand out their bridal party gifts during the rehearsal dinner. So um, the little gifts that you have for your bridesmaids and groomsmen, a lot of people will choose to do that at the rehearsal dinner as well. Now when it comes to deciding where to host the rehearsal dinner, there are a few options you have here and we'll kind of go through the pros and cons of each. So your first option is if you have your venue booked for multiple days, you can host your wedding rehearsal dinner right at your own venue. Um, pros of doing this are it'll save you money from having to book another venue. It's easier to plan, you don't have to deal with travel time since you will already be at the venue doing your rehearsal. You can just move to a different spot and have your rehearsal dinner right there ready to go. You can also use a lot of the same tables and chairs since if you already have them reserved and on site for your wedding so that you're not having to rent out additional um, seating at another location. The cons of this, however, are you will have to set up twice. So you will have to set up tables and chairs for your rehearsal dinner and if you're using the same ones for your wedding day, you'll want to make sure that those are all cleared off and cleaned up and set in the spot they will be at for the wedding day. So it does create a little bit more work for you, which is the downside of having the rehearsal dinner at the same spot as your wedding. Some people also like the idea of having their wedding, wedding venue be somewhat of a grand reveal on the wedding day and don't want to spoil it, so to speak, the night before. Your second option is to reserve a private room or space to host your guests. Um, the most common of this is to have a private room in the back of a restaurant or potentially even a place inside of a hotel if a lot of your guests are staying at a hotel. Um, pros of this option, it's a little bit easier as far as setup. You can kind of hand it off to somebody else. There's less to plan and worry about and clean up. You can also have somebody else provide the food and have it just ready to go so that no one has to worry about um, cooking meals the day before the wedding or transporting meals to another spot and also having somebody else clean up for you, which is a huge pro. <laughs> Cons of this option are it can be pricey, you're obviously reserving a separate space when you're already reserving a venue, and this will likely determine on your guest list and how many people you plan to invite to the rehearsal dinner. You're also going to be likely a little bit more limited when it comes to food and drink options depending on the spot that you choose, whether they have a full liquor license or if they you know, only have a specific menu that they offer for catering and that sort of thing. And then your third option here is to host it at a family member or friend's private property. So this is fairly common to have, um, again depending on the guest list and the amount of people you plan to invite, to host it at the, particularly the groom's family if you're sticking to that tradition at their family home, in a backyard for example. The pros of this option are it is likely the least expensive option. You don't have to spend money to rent a location. It also provides a more intimate setting and you can essentially do as you please when it comes to food, drink, um, play games, whatever you want to do. You kind of have the freedom to do whatever you'd like if you host it at a private residence. The cons of this option, however, are that the bulk of the work will fall on your family, and this is the day before the wedding, so that's something to keep in mind, especially if you are hosting it at one of the, the bride or groom's family parents' home. They're likely going to be really involved the next day, and so determining if you want them to have to worry about hosting a bunch of people in their home, cleaning up, serving food, um, providing food, whatever it may be, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Another thing too is typically at a private residence you will have to rent and bring in seating like tables and chairs, extra seating to um, be able to host everybody in the backyard or in your house or wherever it might be. 
And then you will also be responsible for tearing down and returning all of those items too. So really it's probably your least expensive option. However, it's the option that requires the most labor. Okay, let's talk about cost for a minute. There are obviously many factors that go into planning the rehearsal dinner, like we mentioned before. Um, primarily the guest list and what you plan to serve will be the most, the largest contributing factors to the overall cost. On average, couples will typically spend about $1,300 for a traditional wedding rehearsal dinner involving just the bridal party and close family. But of course, this will vary depending on where you are, the location that you choose, and how many people you wish to have at your rehearsal dinner. So your rehearsal dinner can be as simple or extravagant as you wish. Be sure you're thinking about these things and planning them well in advance. And hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. And we'll see you next week.